It's the beginning of March 2023, so it's been three years now since we started this project. We're going to take you for a little tour this morning. Let's see. Let's go. Already here. This is the vine right here where we let the rescued sloth loose into the forest. We haven't seen them since. The mom and the baby. This is a a trail that we that we built it with my mom and my dad. Thank you, Dad. Oh, it smells fermented here. These are all the fruits from the sapote tree. Right here we have an old growth sapote tree. We bought one of these trail cameras. So we set it up right here. So when the fruits fall and attract the wildlife, we got a little open area to see what sort of animals come here to, to eat the fruit. This is hundreds and hundreds of fruits falling from way up there in the in the canopy and most of them when they hit the ground they smash open like that so that's our old growth sapote tree it's gigantic you can see some of the fruit up there on the branches maybe if the camera picks it up so we put that trail camera there just a couple weeks ago. We haven't checked it yet, so we don't know if there's been animals here or not. But the dogs are interested in what's around here nowadays. They found some what looks like armadillo burrows. I'm gonna go look at those. So we're right at the beginning of March. Of course, it's the heart of the rainy season. A lot of mushrooms growing. It rains about every day this time of year. Over there is where they had the, they were interested in what looks like an armadillo hole. They've been digging up that whole hillside there. Some of the area that we planted. These banana trees are new additions. That's a piquayo, peach palm. So these trees are all three years old now, and you can see this peach palm already is huge for how old it is. There's some seedling leucomas that we planted earlier this year. 
whenever we lose a tree on the property, we like to replace it with these erythrinas here, which is a good fodder tree. But we also planted here some leucoma seeds. In this area, it's probably the most fertile area of the property. So we've got really good development on our fruit trees. This is in a Nona or Sweet Sop. And we have a one of our bigger Mahambo trees right here. This one's already produced a couple fruit this past year. It's flowering. It's flowering right now. Mm -hmm. Do you see any fruits? Right, right there. Oh yeah. Just starting to fruit again. But this area on the property is a nice little pocket of fertility. You can see up there is another sapote tree, just like the one, the old growth one in the forest. And there's what it looks like when it's three years old. What's that one? Pakai. Pakai. But those haven't fruited yet. Not yet. Yeah. This year? We had flowers on, on one down there, but no fruit yet. The other species of ice cream bean has fruited a lot. Here's a little seedling avocado that we planted. When was the last time we weed wrapped this area? Mm, it like was last August? Year. I can, I August? August? It's like seven or eight months ago already. It seems like the grass doesn't grow as fast. Maybe it's because it's getting more shade now. This area was full of different weedy shrubs. I had to come through here with an ax and cut them down. You can see like this is the remnants of one. So we're just trying to thin out the canopy because I think our goal here eventually is to get these fruit trees a little bit bigger. And then in amongst the fruit trees, we still want to have a little bit of grass so we can have grazing animals feed off of that. We're thinking with our market here, what would make the most sense is a small herd of dairy cattle. They would be able to do the maintenance here better than any other animal and provide more cash flow as opposed to anything else. Uh, here's some more of the leucoma seeds we planted just this past year. Those are off to a good start. The erythrina here, I guess we can sacrifice that. If these leucoma trees don't grow, we'll just keep the erythrina. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's a ton of them up there. Yeah. More oh, here. there's one here that you missed yesterday, close oh, to the ground. Yeah. That one. Is it, why are they so big? We don't even. It's just the fertility in the soil here, naturally, huh? We didn't even fertilize anything over here. It's just the way things are naturally. You want to leave this here to pick up on the yes. way back? You can see we've got our pink bananas growing here. Here's another pink banana. They grow really well in the shade. This area is already a forest here. The grass can hardly grow underneath these, these um, ice cream bean trees. This is a caimito. It's a small one. There's a bigger one right here next to the trail. Those haven't started fruiting yet. There were a couple existing trees on the property and we've gotten some fruit off of those. This is a big mango tree. This is a sweet sop. See? Where? Oh yeah. There's another one. Oh, and that's nice. There's another one over here. They're starting to get big. There's another one over here. So this is called Anona in Spanish, which is the genus Anona, obviously. 
and we thought this was a cherimoya tree, but it looks like it's a sweet sop. And this is probably the biggest sweet sop tree we have on the property right here. You can see the way it's growing. It had another shrub off to the side that was giving it a lot of shade. So it's just now starting to grow off to this side of the tree to balance itself out. Oh, there's another, another poop here. I didn't notice this. See? There's one Oh, yeah. There. Oh, my goodness. They're getting pretty big already. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So that's the first wow. fruit we've had on this species. There's another pihuayo palm with a lot of pups at the base. And here's a um, avocado tree. Uvia, also known as Amazon tree grape in English. See the fruit? And we're getting fruit for the first time on this species this year as well. Wow. This There's another one. Another that one, that one right there. Mm -hmm. Now here's the ice cream bean tree that I girdled in one of the last videos. And it's barely hanging on to, to a thread right now. Slowly dying, which is what we wanted. We didn't want to give instant sunlight to the rest of these trees. Guanabana. This is um, guanabana in Spanish. Soursop. It's a soursop tree in English. And then over there is another sweet sop. So those are in the same genus, Anona. And then behind them is the Kaimito tree over there. We have a mango here in the foreground. And then that big tree over there is another Mahambo. And we've got a canopy developing right now of a Pino Chuncho above everything. What's that? A fruit, a fruit in the Mahambo. Oh yeah, up at the top. Wow. Uh-huh. My chapalla. Why is this growing here? Uh, I looks good. I put some fish in. Wow, it's getting huge. Look at that. It's growing all over the grass over there. I spread some seeds over here. What kind is it? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you, bought, you bought the seeds or is it from uh, a, fr local, a fruit? Local. Is it from a fruit that we bought or just some seeds? No, I bought some fruit from the local market. Oh. You don't remember the name though? No, no, no. They look, they but look this is similar. this is really fertile here. It is because we had a tractor chicken. Uh huh. Yeah, that's <laughs> that makes a big difference. Look at that. So yeah, this area here with the girdled ice cream bean tree, this whole area here is pretty much already filling in. There's a forest. You can see this is where we oh, the girded the, the tree right there. No, was it, see the chayote? The chayote? And then, yeah, we planted one of those chayote fruits here. Those are really easy to grow. You just take a fruit and stick it in the ground right there. And it just roots right out of the fruit. So you can see, I mean, this area is already really thick. That's the challenge of this project is we have different species and different pockets of fertility across the landscape. Some areas are very degraded. Some areas like this are really fertile. So there's different growth rates depending on each spot of the property and each tree. which makes it really hard to calculate in terms of putting animals out here. Because We're going to wait for some of the trees to get bigger, but by then other ones are going to be too big and there's not going to be any grass in certain areas of the property. 
Look, Mahamba. Mahamba tree. Ma Mahamba, Mahamba fruit. Mahamba fruit. See? Uh, <laughs> this tree's fruiting for the first time, right? Yeah, most of them. So that's one of our more successful species. All this is really experimental. We had no idea what kind of species or varieties were going to grow out here in this part of the world. There's really not a lot of data, no extension services or anything like that. So we're kind of pioneering a lot of this stuff out here. Look at this taperiba. Taperiba tree is doing very well. See? Uh huh. Taperiba. Maybe we gotta probably thin out this ice cream bean behind it, huh? That's huge. The leaves are edible too on Tapiriba, right? Mm -hmm. What did they call that in English? And the Latin name is Spondius dulcis. Here's a little sapote tree. This is a good example of what I'm talking about. We've got some trees here on the property that are still really stunted and really small, and then we've got other ones that are huge. So that, that becomes a challenge if we want to put any sort of animals out here. We did have chickens in this area up until about a couple months ago we had them out in this whole area for six months and they really did a good job boosting the fertility in this area so everything's been growing a lot better you can notice, uh, you can notice the difference. Uh, there's a pretty fast response with all the plants and the chickens are around so we just had a pretty short run going back to pretty much where that big clump of purple elephant grasses over there on the far end and then all the way back to where those guava trees have already created a forest where those ice cream bean trees have already created a forest back there at the edge of the mature forest so it's not a very long run we were just going back and forth there with the tractors for six months moving them about once every three days and they were out uh, free ranging during the day but they've made a huge difference Oh yeah, that's a nice one. This uh, seed grown avocado right there. Up here on top of the hill, there's another seed grown. This is a really good climate and a really good context for just growing seed grown avocados. Most of them develop pretty well, even in this thick grass. Look at this, look at this plant. Mm -hmm. It's very stubborn. Yeah, so here's That's a good example. I don't know if this is Kaimito or, or a Chope tree, but it's very stunted. You can see this is a, an example of an area of the property with very low fertility. Everything's really stunted in this area. And we tried to bring the chickens up here for a little bit, but just because of the hillside, it wasn't feasible to bring their tractors up here. We did feed them up here a few times. A lot of the pigeon peas that we planted are starting to die out now. They don't live much longer than three years. You can see there's our house over there on the other hill. There's the Ovia tree. It's got fruit on it still. It's the Amazon tree grape. Wow, look at that. The, the, that big ant nest made it all the way over here, too. You got that mango. They really like the mangoes. I don't know why. Seems to be their favorite. There's the Mahambo that was the first one that fruited. How's this one doing?
some tiny ones. There's one over there. Wait, I know I'm seeing it. Oh yeah. It's starting to get big already. Yeah. From that size, how long is it oh, until yeah. it's ready to harvest? Uh, two months. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Just two more months? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. It's gotta get a lot bigger though. Yeah, it gets bigger. This earth rhino we planted what last year? This one's been there in the ground at least a year, so it's already pretty big. I've seen cows here actually able to reach up and and bite a branch to knock the branch down in order to get the leaves. So you need them to be pretty sturdy to resist the cows. So this is one of the more neglected spots on the property, this whole back slope here. It's pretty far away from the house, so we don't come here very often. But it is one of the more fertile spots on the property. And right down there, it's already a forest. I don't even think the grass grows under some of those ice cream beans. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, there's another Amazon tree grape tree over there. That one's got a lot of fruit on it. I can see these leaf cutter ants are, have found all the trees over here in this section. There's a big leaf cutter ant nest right in that patch of forest over there, right along the uh, right on the property boundary there. Look at this one was harvested by the leaf cutters. Now it's re-sprouting. But if they do that too much, they won't re-sprout, they die eventually. They've learned that the hard way. So right here, I'm standing on what is our property line. Yeah, a good nest that size can pretty much wipe out a couple hectares worth of fruit trees. Hi, Polly. This is the, the biggest one. Is it ripe? Not yet. Probably it'll take uh, 15 days to go ripe. Oh, uh, they're still green though. On the Uvia. Mm -hmm. Amazon yeah, tree grape. Alright, let's go check out sector B, the area now where we moved the chickens. I just noticed that this is the, the Bahamba tree, the only one that has lots of roots. You see? How many? There are like one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. Probably because it's right next to one of our ponds. Probably because it's right next to the pond, huh? Yeah, probably, yeah. So this whole hillside area here is what we call Sector B. And about two months ago we moved the chickens over to this area. And we started out on this end and we've already worked our way to the other end. And now they're starting to come back this direction. When we first moved them over here it was 
think November, December. December we had a really bad drought. Only had about one storm the entire month. And November was also pretty dry. So pretty much nothing was growing in this area. But now, as of January, we've had consistent rain, so things are growing a lot now and the weeds are starting to get out of control again. There's another Mahambo there. If it's leaning, it's because it has fruit. That's a big, big fruit there too. So pretty much all of our birds are free range during the day. And so they like to come and explore. We dug these little pocket ponds here. That's about the level of the water table in this area. So you just stick your shovel in the ground and the hole instantly fills back in with water. So we put three of those little ponds in this area just so they have some water during the day. So you can see this is the sort of the runway where we had the chicken tractors. Kind of where that peach palm is. And they come through here, you can still see how the grass is really low in this area. The safari is doing very well. So we've already gone to the opposite end of this, of sector B. And the tractors there are on their return trip now. Yeah, this area is, the area here is very soggy most of the year. It dries out a little bit during the dry season and we had that drought in December and it actually dried out then more than I've ever seen it. And now that the rains are back, it's pretty soggy again. So what happens is if you leave the chickens in one spot too long, they can destroy the ground pretty easily. So in these soggy areas, we like to move them a lot faster. Jeez, that's huge. They're out of season. Look at the size of these. I mean, it's not that big of a tree, but these are huge fruit. Here's one. Good. Why don't you feed the dogs and, and the birds? So this is where the tractors ended. This is where we turned them around. They got about this far right here and then we like to weed whack just uh certain rows so you have a row of trees right here you can see there's the row and then here's the next row and so we have an alleyway right here in the middle and we don't weed whack every alley we found that that's actually makes it a little bit more interesting for the birds so we tend to alternate alleys. So this this alley right here was weed whacked, but this next one wasn't. And the next one after that is weed whacked. The next one is not. So we just go like that throughout the landscape. And then that kind of increases the edge. So there's better forage for the birds. They got a nice mixture of areas where they can scratch and they got a mixture of areas where there's grass and kind of refuges for bugs. The bugs tend to hide like the grasshoppers and these little banks of grass. flat spots on the property here. Hey, 
see the mandarina tree over there? It was already here when we got here. It's got a lot of fruit, doesn't it? Lots of fruit. That's, but the fruit is that's kind the, of sour. That's the best year yet for the fruit, I think. <laughs> this is the biggest metawayo that we have in the property. But what is a metawayo? I've never, I've never eaten a, a metawayo. I'm, even though I'm from the, from the area, I've never tried. We've never seen them in a market either, have we? No. Nobody even, nobody even really knows what it is. <laughs> Maybe it's a nut. It's some sort of nut, but nobody here even produces them. Could be a market opportunity. This is a new trail that I just started working. I didn't notice how much property we have in this in this area. I'm still working in this area. This is a nice forest. I I found lots of orchids hanging on the trees. This tree has lots of, of mushrooms. Mushrooms? Oh, this yeah. Way, this way. Come this way. I know what kind of mushroom this is. See? The, wow. Maybe it's a Ganoderma? I don't know. But this is an old, old tree. It looks like this tree is gonna fall down. See? It looks very odd. In this area, there are lots of tangarana trees. Those What's... ends are very, very, I mean, very, very mean. Yeah, and they get on you from the ground too, I think. This tree has lots of orchids. Oh, that's a nice tree. On the branches. Of, on the oh, branches, yeah. yeah. Lots of orchids. Okay, that's it for this year's annual update. Until next time, bye. Bye.